All right, for the last bit of material for this week, um, we're going to start talking about the fun stuff, which is manipulating HTML elements from JavaScript. We're going to get much more deeply into this next week, but we are I am going to introduce it to you here and show you some of the things that you can do with it. Okay, so the function that we're going to be using today to grab HTML elements to target HTML elements from our JavaScript is a docu is a <laughs> is a function called dot get element by ID. Okay, this is the function, and we're going to be forming the we're going to be performing this function on our HTML document. Document dot get element by ID. This is a function which will, which will, I'm going to plug an ID in here. Let's for now just go with, with intro. What this function is going to do is select our document object, our HTML page. Document represents our full HTML web page, remember. And it is going to run on that document the get element by ID function, which will target the element with this ID and return it. Okay, it's kind of like creating a hook for us to use and, and hook into a given element so that we can manipulate it, move it, change its content using JavaScript. Currently our HTML is completely empty, but let's go into my index and create an H1 element give it an ID of intro and have it say hello world okay now I'm gonna start just by running this in the console not in not in our code so we can see everything at the same time there's hello world if I check this element in my elements tab I select it with my inspector I see it's an H1 with an ID of intro and it says hello world. So let's jump into my console and run document.get element by ID. Pay attention to the camel casing. Pay attention to the fact that get is not capitalized, but every other new word is. And pay attention to the fact that only the I in ID is capitalized. I used to do this a lot with capital I, capital D. I used to do this a lot and it would always throw errors and it would frustrate me and I couldn't figure it out. It will happen to probably all of you at some point. So um, watch your camel casing there. Get element by ID and in these parentheses I'm going to write the ID intro. I'm not writing it with a hashtag. I'm not writing it with anything else. Just the name of the ID. I hit enter and it actually returns to me the HTML element itself. And when I hover over it with my mouse in my console, it highlights. This is my way to select or target from JavaScript this H1. Now, why should we care? Why should we need or want to, manip to target an element from JavaScript? Because we can manipulate them we can change them. Let's say for example I wanted to make this this element say something else. So I'm going to write document get element by ID intro which will equates to this element itself and I'm going to ac access its text content property. I'm going to access the text content property of this H1 and I'm going to set it equal to something new and look at that it has changed the text on our actual HTML page in real time so if you think why would I want to do that when I can just change it here well that's true but sometimes you may want the text to change on a click of a button maybe you want the color to change on a click of a button maybe you want an element to change styles on the click of a button or on on some kind of event that is triggered by JavaScript 
So this is where we're starting to get into the real meat of it, the, the real appeal and the real power of JavaScript, being able to select and manipulate HTML elements. Okay, so text content is one way to access the text content of a text element. There are other ways, though. Text content is not the only one. Uh, let me change this message to new message. In addition to text content, there's also an inner text property. These are all a little, a little bit different. They all have little slight differences, but you don't need to worry about them just yet. But inner text and text content are two very easy ways to access the text content of a text element. Okay, And we can also use the equal sign, the assignment operator, to give it a new value. What I mean is, <clears throat> if I typed in this line up top without the equals new message, it will return to me what the inner text actually contains. So let's reload my page. It will reset back to hello world and run this. It says hello world. That is the value of the inner text property of this HTML element. This is the value of the inner text property of this HTML element. Okay, just like we did students.name, the inner text in this metaphor is dot name. Dot inner text is dot name. Get element by ID intro, the H1, is students at a given index. This is the object which has the name property. This is accessing the name property. And here, this is the HTML element, which is read by JavaScript as an object, but don't worry about that. This is the element, and we are accessing the inner text property. And it has a value of hello world. And we can, of course, also change the value of that property. Okay, so we use document.getElementById to target HTML elements by a unique ID and we are capable of manipulating them once we have targeted them. So let's see what that might look like in actual code. In actual code you don't want to just run this line of code and expect something to happen. Okay, this is going to return the element, but unless we store it somewhere or do something with it right away, like dot inner text, it's just going to disappear into memory. Okay? Suffice to say, we need to store any kind of element that we want to target into a variable so that we can easily manipulate it whenever we want. So I'm going to create a variable called my h1 set it equal to document.getElementById intro. If you want, you could, you, I could name this intro, but I don't want to confuse you as to any possible connection between the name of your variable and the name of the ID. So I'm going to call it myH1. Now I reload my page, and if I call the variable myH1, there it is. That's, that's the element. So I don't need to write document.getElementById by ID every time I need to select it now. I can just write my h1. My h1 dot inner text. My h1 dot inner text equals new text. Okay, I've now stored the hook for this element itself inside a variable and I can use that variable name as a shorthand to refer to this element, to manipulate this element, to access this element, anything that I want to do. Okay, so inner text is very straightforward. Text content is very straightforward. Um, another way in which you can manipulate HTML elements, which we're going to go over more next week, is let's say we wanted to change the style a little bit. Well, I could write my h1 dot style dot color equals red. And there we go, I changed the font color. 
What this is doing, again, we're going to talk about it more next week, but what this is doing is creating a style attribute on that H1 element, giving it a color property, and setting the value of that property to red. And anything in your style attribute, this is inline styling, this is why we tell you not to write it, anything in a style attribute will override your CSS. So it is accessing the color property of the style property of my H1. And even if this doesn't have a value, it is giving it a value. It is providing it with a value of red, assigning it a value of red. And now the color of my H1 is red. How about my h1.style dot font <clears throat> font size equals 50 pixels. Now it's bigger. Okay, something to note here is you can plug in any CSS property imaginable after dot style and access the value of that CSS property or that style property. But if it normally has a hyphen in CSS like font size or like background color, then in when you access it using JavaScript like this, you need to replace that hyphen with a camel case. Okay, but don't get distracted by that. Don't let that confuse you. Today we are focusing on that inner text and text content <clears throat> and how you can insert custom text into an element this way. Okay, now let's go back to our um, array of student objects. And let's try to display all of this information inside pre-existing elements in our CSS in a meaningful way. What I mean to say is let's create <clears throat> one H1 which has an ID of names and I'm going to leave it empty. Then I'm going to create an H2 with an ID of <clears throat> scores and then I'm going to create an H4 with an ID of enrolled. Okay. Now I want to put <clears throat> each student name into that names H1. And I want to put each student score, one after another, into that scores H2. And I want to put whether or not they're enrolled into that enrolled H4. So I'm going to have to target all three of these elements at some point in time from my JavaScript. So let's start <clears throat> by creating a variable for each. My h1 equals document dot get element by id names var my h2 equals document dot get element by id scores var my h4 equals document dot get element by id enrolled okay now that we have those all set and ready to go let's write a for loop to loop through this array And every time we loop through the array, let's select the inner text of my h1 and add to it students i dot name plus a space for concatenation. Actually, a comma and a space. Okay. If you're not clear on why I'm writing my h1 dot inner text equals my h1 dot inner text plus something, it's the same principle as writing i equals i plus one. We are 
changing the value of i to the current value of i plus 1, so 0 plus 1. We are updating i by adding 1 to whatever it currently equals. So I'm doing the same thing with the inner text of my h1. Even though it's currently empty, it's not going to be empty the next time we run through this loop, is it? I'll show you what that's going to look like in a second, but let's first make sure that this is working. Here we go, Evan Matt Courtney. Evan Matt Courtney. <clears throat> let's add another, another space in here just to make that a little cleaner. Okay, there we go. And let's move that comma. Let's get rid of the comma altogether since we're not going to bother controlling for it right now. Okay, so my h1 dot inner text plus space plus students i dot name. Let me go ahead and get rid of this this part of this um, expression and show you what happens. We just get Courtney. The reason for that is the first time we run through the loop. We are seeing my h1 dot inner text equals students i dot name, so that's going to be Evan plus a space, right? Then we run this again. I has now equals one, so we get Matt. And it overwrites it. And finally, i equals two, we get Courtney. It overwrites it again. Without that piece to this expression, we're just overwriting the, the inner text of this my h1 variable each time, and we don't want that. We want this. Okay, so that's my h1. Now let's do my h4 dot inner, no, my h2, pardon me, dot inner text equals my h2 dot inner text plus space plus students i like i dot score plus a space okay and then we get their scores down below and finally we can do the same thing for my h4 my h4 my h4 is enrolled. False, true, true. Now obviously we might want to format this information just like we did uh, in the previous video, but I'm not going to show you how to do that this time. I suggest that you come in and try to format some of this information. Don't separate the names, don't separate the scores, don't separate the is enrolled, but you can change these booleans to something more meaningful. You can maybe break each name onto a new line, something along those lines. Or you could line up each of these text elements left to right and make it look like a small table. Evan, score, is enrolled. Matt, score, is enrolled. Courtney, score, is enrolled. But it's not going to be easy. Give it a try. It's going to be excellent practice, and um, you're going to be doing this a lot in the future. And you're going to be jumping directly into looping through arrays of objects and inserting information in those objects into HTML elements this week for this week's project. So it is important that you give it a try.